This is the final video in the series produced by Housing New Zealand to demonstrate different methods of repairing earthquake damaged concrete ring and concrete floor foundations. This is 21 and 21A Rislaw Street, a double unit dwelling in the suburb of Shirley. They have two bedrooms per unit with two single garages in the middle which separate the living spaces on each side. It has a concrete floor and foundation, type 2C, with a concrete tiled roof and brick exterior cladding. The liquefaction from the February 2011 earthquake was severe. It caused the intertenancy wall between the garages to sink significantly and it pushed the liquefaction up under the driveway, raising it by several hundred millimetres. The method being trialled on this property is a mechanical lift using screw piles. The first task is to locate the services around the house, electricity, drainage, etc., and to disconnect them from the house. About a metre of ground around the perimeter of the house is cleared of grass and other garden foliage to make access for the screw piles. As soon as this is done, individual holes are excavated down to the bottom of the house foundation. The holes are approximately 600 by 800 millimetres and 1.8 metres apart as required by the engineering specifications. Screw piles are then drilled into every hole. The engineer requires 3 metre piles to achieve enough torque to lift the house. Because of the restricted height of the suffetes, a 2 metre pile is screwed down followed by a 1 metre extension. As the piles are being screwed into the ground, a torque reader inside the cab shows the current reading. At every metre, a torque reading is recorded. When all the screw piles are in place, a prefabricated engineered bracket is attached to the top of each screw pile. Bolts are then drilled and epoxied into the foundations. A lifting jack is fitted between the screw pile and the foundation bracket by way of RHS bars and adjustable threaded rods. All the jacks are manually operated around the perimeter of the building in sequence so that the house floor is evenly raised. Inside the house, holes are drilled into the concrete floor at 1.5 metres apart to allow access to fill the void under the floor with a selected low mobility grout. A specialist machine is on site to mix the grout and pump it under low pressure via spuds to the drilled holes. As the grout flows under the floor slab, filling the void, each hole is plugged until the grout has cured. The hole is then capped with a waterproofing agent. This is a room-by-room -room approach, starting at one end of the house and working along to the other. The process of lifting the house has taken up to five days to complete. The void filling has taken another two days. It is proven to be cost-effective in that the existing floor slab is raised and levelled while keeping the heavy weight roof and veneer intact. Once completed, the site can be cleared, internal damage repaired and the property is prepared for the new tenants.